Morning guys. Today we're going to make a simple 24 volt 6S lithium battery charger. Let's get into it. Hey guys. Today I'm doing some work on the board and I'm setting up my own custom charger. This is a 6S or 6-cell lithium polymer battery that's used in the board. And uh, normally I would use an RC car charger for most of my 6S batteries, but this is a 40 amp hour or 40,000 milliamp hour battery pack. So kind of large, and um, so I'm making my own charger. Now a little disclaimer here, lithium polymer batteries can be very volatile and hazardous. Uh, if handled improperly. So anytime you work with lithium polymer batteries or make your own equipment, it is uh, there's quite a, a risk involved there. So if you are not very confident in working with electronics or um, just overall fabrication, then I would highly recommend just purchasing a, uh, an industry standard charger. But uh, I found that chargers like this are going to be upwards of $1,000 or more, and they're only going to give you maybe 800 watts of charging. With this, you can get 1,200 watts of peak charging, and it's going to cost you, at the very most, $350, probably less than that. If you really price shop, you can get it down to about $200 to set up this charger. So, But again, you are doing this at your own risk, so uh, bear that in mind. Anyway, let's get into it. So to make my own charger, a uh, few things here. First off, I'm using a Meanwell brand RSP1000 power supply. In this case, it's RSP1000-24. Uh, RSP is the model, uh, 1000 is the wattage, and 24 is the voltage. So input, 100 to 240 volts AC at 12 amps. Output, 24 volts at 40 amps. So I have to wire a cord, uh, normal AC cord to these terminals and my DC output to these terminals. And then the voltage is adjustable with this small trim potentiometer. It goes down to, I believe, 20 volts and up to something like 27 volts. Uh, so you can adjust that there. Now, uh, this is a constant voltage current tapering charger which is what's important, uh, or power supply, I should say, for making a charger. What you don't want is a constant current voltage tapering charger uh, or power supply because to make a charger for lithium batteries, you need constant voltage, but you need the current to taper as the, the pack reaches full, uh, full charge. And again, that's adjustable with this potentiometer. Now, for a digital display, what I'm using here, you can see the housing for it. This is an Astroflight brand watt meter. So these are designed for um, uh, testing, bench testing RC airplanes and cars and whatnot. And what you do is you send power into one side and out the other, and the display gives you voltage, amperage, and cumulative watt hours used. So what I do is wire this to the output of the charger and mount the case to the housing of the charger to make my own um, my own battery charger. So again, this is just a Meanwell industrial power supply, an Astroflight watt meter uh, that I'm going to install to use as a uh, as a digital display for the uh, the charger that I'm making. And when all is said and done, this will actually output close to 1,200 watts. So I will have a uh, a charger that should be able to charge the board from you know low charge say 20 percent state of charge uh, up to about 90 percent which is where i'll have the uh, the voltage cut off at in probably oh somewhere in the range of about uh half hour or so or at the end of most rides i plug it in for 15 minutes and it'd be charged back up uh, instead of the two or three hours it was taking to uh to get 15 minutes of riding uh charge in with my little rc car charger so i'll get to it and show you guys the progress all right, so one step that I need to do is I need to beef up the power wires going in and out of this watt meter. Oh, this watt meter, by the way, is good up to, I believe it's 70 volts and 70 amps. So I'll be feeding it a little bit more than 40 amps. But the wires will get will get hot. It's been my experience. So I'll be running, uh, getting rid of this small, I think it's 12-gauge wire and running 8-gauge wire. And I typically use car audio 
uh, power wire because it's fine stranded so it's it's very soft and pliable and super high quality so I'm going to be upgrading the wire going all the way from the charger through this through this watt meter and then all the way to the output plug to the board also as a power cord for the for the uh, power supply I'm just using a uh, an extension cord an industrial a piece of industrial extension cord that I cut off the end this was just a short uh, short cord that I had for another purpose that I needed the the uh, female end of the cord for another purpose and so I'm reusing this uh, repurposing this end as a power cord for the charger so here you can see I've got the cord installed I just uh, drilled a couple of uh, drilled a couple small holes here on the side of the housing to use some good industrial zip ties and then just uh, you know wired the ground the live and the neutral uh, to the terminal block so that step is done and um, so we'll move on to the uh, wiring the display all right so here we've got uh, eight gauge wire replacing the original uh, thinner gauge wire and uh, the the circuit boards will squeeze together and it still fits in the housing but um, so all right Next step, putting the housing together and installing it onto the power supply case um, to uh, mate the two together, which will make it a charger. All right, so we've got our display with our, um, with our wires coming off, and I've got uh, ring terminals crimped on and heat shrinked. I always use marine grade heat shrink. The difference is marine grade heat shrink has an adhesive inside and as you heat it up to shrink down the adhesive also melts and literally glues the heat shrink down to the wire and the terminal so next thing is to uh, mount those to the power supply and mount the little uh, display box to the housing of the power supply and then we're almost done it would just be a matter of installing our battery charge plug in this case it's an xt90 uh, plug onto the end of the leads and then um, set the voltage with our trim potentiometer and uh, yeah we'll be all set all right here we've got our XT90 connector all soldered up so you can see I individually heat uh, I used heat shrink on each wire separately and then I'm gonna put this larger piece of heat shrink over the entire connector and around the wires so that'll give me a little bit of extra uh, a little bit of extra security make sure that the the tiny bits of uh, of metal there can't short against anything and it, it makes it a lot stronger and and just a, a better connection overall all right so I've got the the plug finish wired and you can see I've I've labeled certain things you can see I've labeled the uh, use my handy dandy brother label maker uh, labeled the output uh, labeled uh, 6s charger and I also put a, a sticker on the on the deck 6s 24 volt now the reason I did that is that this is a very similar look uh, charger to the charger I, I have for my 12s 48 volt battery packs for my bikes also with an XT90 connector uh, it's a long story as to why I'm sticking with the same connector but I just wanted to make sure that everything is labeled uh, eventually I'll probably take this flag off but I just wanted to have it on there for my own reference so that I don't screw up and plug in my 12s charger to the board so uh, this is for the board alone or any other 6s system that I set up but um, so uh, yeah there's a, a couple benefits to uh, setting a setting up a charger like this uh, the first thing is it's very reasonably priced uh, you can get these power supplies on eBay for, oh, I don't know, anywhere from $150 to $300, depending on if you get a new one or an open box or a used one. Uh, these watt meters typically are about $75 bucks from uh, Astro Flight, but again, you can find them on eBay pretty reasonably priced. And again, a piece of heavy-duty extension cord, use very heavy cord for this because it's going to draw some current, but some heavy extension cords, some 8-gauge car audio wire, zip ties, XT90 connector, and you're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in and show you how the display works here, and we'll set the voltage. So I've plugged it in, and it comes up and shows 24.5 volts coming out, which is just about perfect as to what I want. I actually, um, uh, I'm looking for, uh, see 25.2 volts would be the maximum state of charge 
and uh, about 24 volts even would be 80% charge. So I want to go with uh, right about 24 and a half volts in order to um, set the battery for 90% um, state of charge, which is where I like to charge. But I'm going to go ahead and show you, even though the voltage is correct, I'm going to show you what the adjustment is like. So uh, I'm going to go down to this small potentiometer with my screwdriver and I'm going to adjust it. Now you see as I turn it up the voltage on the display goes up. That's the max and um, it goes back. I can adjust it back down again and that's the minimum. So 18 and a half to 27 volts. So I'm going to go back up to 27 or excuse me to 24 and a half volts which is about what I need. Back it off a little bit for my battery pack. There we go. So 24.48 volts, pretty close. Now I'm gonna unplug this, and uh, you can hear the fans running as well. There's cooling fans in the back of this, and this charger will get hot under load. I'm gonna unplug it from the, uh, from the AC power cord here and show you something interesting. Now with this, this type of setup, if the charger is unplugged, you can see it's unplugged from the AC power, uh, I can plug it in just to the board and check the voltage of the battery pack in the board on this display. So you can see the display is powering up and there's the voltage of the battery, 23.75 volts. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plug the, uh, plug the AC power cord back in and um, the charger will turn on and you'll hear the fans speed up because it'll be under load and we'll be able to read the, the amps and the watts and the cumulative watt hours. So we'll go plug that in. So you can hear how the fans are a higher pitch than before and right now we're seeing 36 amps. You can see the amps dropping rapidly because it's pumping current into the battery pack. So uh, the charger's putting out 24.4 volts or uh, we're seeing 780 watts and uh, cumulative watt hours uh, let's see let's get to amp hours 0.24 amp hours so you can see it's charging pretty rapidly and um, so we'll let it charge for just a short time here and then I'll unplug it from the from the AC power source and uh, I'll show you that the display will remember where we were at so we'll go ahead and do that oh and you can see that the amperage and the wattage is tapering because with lithium polymer batteries, such as what I have in the board here, lithium chemistry batteries, the higher the state of charge, the less current they accept. And gradually the current drops until it is down at zero amps and uh, resting at the pre-programmed voltage. So that is, that's why this makes a great lithium charger is because it's a constant voltage, current tapering power supply, and that makes it a good lithium charger. So I'm gonna go and unplug it here. So it's still plugged into the battery pack, but no longer into the wall. And you can see here the battery pack is now resting at 23.9 volts, and we've gotten 0.664 amp hours uh, of power into the battery. So once you unplug it from the battery, then it the display goes blank as the power bleeds off. So there's the completed charger. It's a, it's a fun uh, fun project to to build this. Uh, they work wonderfully. I've been using this this particular type of setup for years. Uh, I have a 12S battery charger set up for my e-bikes that I use uh, this power supply, and I have a second unused power supply that I'm going to double up with that um, my bicycle power supply. So that would give me 48 volts at 46 amps to charge uh, my largest battery packs very rapidly. The only last item is that these exposed output terminals uh, are exposed, so I'm just going to use a piece of Gorilla Tape around them. It's very heavy-duty tape just to keep them from shorting out on anything. So anyway, um, that's our charger project for the day. Give me a thumbs up, like, and subscribe if you have any suggestions or ideas or any other projects that you guys have built on your own. Go ahead and let me know. But uh, so yeah, it's uh, the board is a fun project. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. You can see the grip tape I installed. Uh, the red grip tape in the center there is uh, that's an arrow just to point to the nose of the board in case you're wondering what that is. But uh, so yeah, a lot of fun. I will continue to update you guys as other projects uh, come along the pipeline. I've got a couple cool ideas that I'll be doing here shortly. Take it easy.